Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about student-centered classrooms. Let's start with this question. What is the difference between teacher-centered classrooms and student-centered classrooms? In teacher-centered classrooms, the teacher is the provider of knowledge and the students passively receive information. In a student-centered classrooms, we consider the needs of the students and encourage them to participate in the learning process all the time. So a student-centered approach is more effective, motivating, and enjoyable. Now, what are the characteristics of student-centered classrooms? What does a student-centered classroom look like? You know, in a student-centered class, students don't depend on their teacher all the time. They communicate with each other, they cooperate, they learn from each other, and they help each other. When they have difficulty, they ask the teacher for help. So, in a student-centered class, you may find the students working alone. They prepare ideas or make notes before a discussion. Uh, they do a listening exercise. They do a written uh, assignment, uh, any grammar or vocabulary exercises. And also, at different times, you may find them working together in pairs or groups so they can compare and discuss their answers. They can read and react to one another's written work. And also, at different times, you may find them working as a whole class, interacting with the teacher. So they share ideas, opinions, experiences, they ask questions, they brainstorm ideas, they have discussions or role plays. So as you can see, in a student-centered class, at different times, students may be working alone, in pairs, or in groups, or as a whole class. Another question, what is the role of the teacher in a student-centered classroom? The teacher is responsible for helping students work independently, monitoring them while they are working together, and giving them feedback afterwards. So before students begin working together, we need to help prepare them. So we introduce relevant vocabulary, we need to make sure they know exactly what they are supposed to be doing and why, as well as how long they have for the activity. Then, while students are working together, the teacher will be moving around the class, listening to different groups to give advice and encouragement. Then, after they have finished working together, the teacher will give them feedback. He offers suggestions and advice, praises students, makes corrections for mistakes overheard during conversations, and answers the questions on vocabulary, pronunciation, grammar, or other topics. So as you can see, at different times in a lesson, the teacher's role may change. Well, what activities can be implemented in a student-centered classroom? I will give you some examples. Grammar and vocabulary exercises. They are ideal student-centered activities. It might be quicker to do them alone, but doing them together can be fun and beneficial. Multiple choice and fill in the blanks exercises. Also, they are effective and enjoyable when done in pairs or groups. Also, you can give your students communicative activities like writing an email to a friend, writing a formal letter to the school administration, planning and presenting a play, planning and giving a speech for assembly, planning and having a meeting with the principal. You can implement also problem solving. Give them puzzles, problems, and brain teasers. They can work together to solve them. You can give them writing tasks. So after they have written the topic, they can read one another's work and discuss it. And also before the writing task, they can have some kind of brainstorming together. 
you can implement role plays. It's fun and enjoyable for the students. You can give the students listening tasks. So after they have done the listening activity alone, they can compare their answers in pairs and they can have a group discussion about what they have heard. You can give them a reading task with follow-up questions. So after answering the questions alone, they can share their ideas together and they can have discussion about the information they have found out. So as you can see, there are many activities that can be implemented to make your classroom student-centered. Another question, how to deal with problems that may arise when implementing student-centered approach? Of course, you may face problems when you implement this approach. For example, students may be more tempted to speak in their native language rather than in English when they work together in pairs or in groups. How can you solve this problem? Interrupt and remind them firmly that we only use English when we work together. Ask them to start the conversation again using only English. And be sure that you yourself use English when talking to students all the time. Remind the students that your class may be their only opportunity to speak English. Also, give them some confidence. Tell them that they really do have enough knowledge to be able to carry on a conversation in English. Also, you have to be sure that the tasks are within their capabilities and give them enough time to prepare before the activity. Another problem is that a classroom full of students all talking at once can make a lot of noise. How can you solve this problem? Encourage the students to talk softly. Make sure they are sitting really close together and facing each other. And remember that what may seem like disorder is actually the noise of engaged learning. So don't worry about this noise. It's healthy noise. Another problem is that teachers may overhear students making all kinds of mistakes while working together. How can you solve this? Don't correct the students while they are trying to communicate ideas. Just move around and take notes while monitoring so you can point out the mistakes afterwards. Focus systematically on different categories of mistakes in each lesson later on. Another problem that may arise, some students are less confident. They, they don't want to uh, participate in conversations. They don't want to work together. How can you solve this problem? Show them that it's easy to start the conversation. So demonstrate the conversation in front of the class using a confident student as your partner. Also, have them prepare talking points before beginning their conversations. And remind them that this is practice, not a test. As you can see, some problems may arise when implementing student-centered instruction, but the benefits compensate for any difficulties we may encounter. Remember that in a student-centered classroom, students are more involved, they work together in English, they talk more, they share their ideas, they learn from each other, they feel more secure and less anxious, they use English in a meaningful, realistic way, and they enjoy using English to communicate. So it may take an effort, but it's an effort worth taking. Thank you for listening.